Yo, what's going on, buddy? This is Dylan Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In today's video, as you can see by the news, JJ Redick has been hired to be the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, I think he's going to be the new head coach. We thought Dan Hurley a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago, he was supposed to be the head coach, but then he backed out. So far, so good. I think JJ Redick is going to be the head coach. If the news holds and JJ Redick is the head coach, he's going to be taking over the reins. And the thing that I do and don't like about this is. JJ Redick as a coach, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. We'll see kind of how it pans out. But what I wanted to talk about in today's video is why this could possibly be just like an epic meltdown. And it could be for a couple reasons. Number one, JJ Redick has never been a coach. Number two, they are in a win now mode. And if they think that JJ Redick is the key to winning a championship right now, I got some news for you. It's probably not going to happen. So what I wanted to do is kind of go through, review JJ Redick as a coach, what I think he can bring to the table, and then how this could be a positive and negative. And then honestly, like I said, I think should, this was a bad choice for a coach. I think they should have went a different route, and I'll kind of explain my reasoning why. But I'm going to go ahead and get straight into this. If you're going to enjoy it, as always, make sure you go and drop a like on this video. Be very much appreciated to do so. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, when it comes to J.J. Redick as a player, when he played in the league and the knowledge that he probably had, he's got a lot of knowledge. He called games in the NBA many times. He knows what he's talking about. He knows the insides and outs of the NBA. When you hear him speak on all different networks from get up to first take to, like I said, calling games on just the NBA broadcast, just calling the games, he knows what he's talking about. Like, he's got some knowledge up there. He played 15 years in the league. He, he's a very good player. Those of you who probably forgot about him, I'm telling you right now, if you actually go back and watch him play, he was a good player. He was kind of under, he was a little bit overrated at times, but he was a good player. Now, the reasoning behind why he probably got the head coaching job, I think is because LeBron James, he's the one that probably put the word in to say, hey, can we get JJ Reddick to be my, to be my coach? JJ Reddick and LeBron James, they both got uh, the podcast that they're doing together. And I'm wondering if they both talked to each other a lot and they were just like, let's see if we can get you to be the coach, bro. Now, positives whenever it comes to JJ Reddick. Number one, he's going to be a team guy. He's going to be right there in the locker room. He'll be like one of the guys. He's not going to be somebody that thinks he's just above and beyond everybody else. He's going to be right there in the locker room. He's going to be one of the boys. He's going to be able to mesh well with the locker room, I think. Number two, he's best friends basically with LeBron James right now, with, like I said, with them doing the podcast. So it's not going to be like a coach in there that LeBron James is going to be able to look at within 10 games and be like, oh, fuck this guy. Get him out of here. Fire him. If you're going to fire JJ Reddick, it also means you're going to fire your best friend. Now, when it comes to some negatives, here's a lot of things we got to go over. Number one, he's never been an NBA coach before. The last time we saw something like this happen with Steve Nash coaching the Brooklyn Nets, he had all the talent in the world. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden got there. Uh, I think Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, the names go on and on with the talent. And how did that work out? The furthest they ever got was the semifinals. They lost that game because of the infamous Kevin Durant foot on the line three-point attempt. And other than that, they were eliminated in the first round and missed the playoffs a couple of other times. And you know why? Because sometimes an experienced coach is sometimes better than a first-time coach. Like JJ never coached as an assistant or like a like a towel boy or whatever in the NBA. He was a player for 15 years. He got out of that. He went straight into media, social media, uh, entertainment, it, reporting on the NBA. He's never coached. Now, could he have coached like in different types of things? Possibly. I believe he has kids. Maybe he coached with his kids. Uh, but when it comes to just the NBA strictly, he's never coached there. There's times in the podcast where I see him. He'll sit there and talk about it with LeBron James. They'll kind of break down plays, talk about ways they could, oh, man, this play here with for this game for two random teams that maybe LeBron or JJ is not associated with. That like, oh, man, look at this play here. They ran this play. It failed epically. This is what I would have done. They would drop a play. And JJ, he would go in depth and he would make it very intricate as to why this play here could possibly work. So when it comes to him, it's just like I said, knowledge, uh, knowing the ins and outs of the game, he's going to be good in that area. The problem I have with him is there were so many other candidates. Uh, Monty Williams just got fired from the Detroit Pistons. He could have possibly went over to LA, got an interview. Uh, Kenny Atkinson for the Golden State Warriors assistant. Uh, James Borrego, the Pel uh, Pelicans assistant. There was a, and there's a lot of other assistants out there that are being interviewed for other jobs. I believe the Cavaliers, they're still interviewing a couple of these guys. There, there was a lot of guys that these the Lakers could have went after and tried to interview. And I think after Dan Hurley left town and said, I'm not being your coach, they just said, screw this, we got to hire somebody. But they kept it in mind to say, hey, we need to hire somebody, but we think we can win a championship right now. We need somebody that can come in here and win a championship for us. If you wanted to win a championship right now, you probably would have been better off taking your route to, like like I said, Monty Williams, J uh, Kenny Atkinson route. One of those two, they probably would have been perfect for you guys. But with J.J. Redick, it's like, what's going to happen if you guys go out there this season and you don't even make the playoffs and you're going to fire him right away? Is he going to be your scapegoat? When last time I checked, everybody, including myself, has said it. You guys don't have a good roster. You have a couple of stars in LeBron and Anthony Davis, aging stars. You have a couple of good players, like I said, Austin Reeves. And then you have just a bunch of bums. After that, it's like, you need to build your roster. It's like in the Lakers' mind, they think they are championship contenders. When in reality, they're barely scratching the surface of playoff contenders. Sure, do I think this team can get in the playoffs and win a series? Possibly. 
but it's like it's gonna be so damn tough to do it and i'm wondering after the season's over if they end up not making the playoffs with jj reddick are they gonna be looking back saying like man i wish we would have just kept darwin ham because he was a good coach darwin ham was an experienced coach he's sure he was he went back to Milwaukee. He After he got fired, he went back to Milwaukee to become an assistant under, I believe, Doc Rivers. But he was doing a good job for the Lakers. He got them to the East, or the Western Conference Finals uh, the first year he was there. And then last year, he got to the playoffs, but they had to face the Nuggets. And they ended up losing that series 4-1. I just feel like J.J. Reddick is being set up for failure. Because if he goes out there, like I said, if they go out there and succeed in the first year, I'm telling you right now, if they don't make it to the Western Conference Finals, he's getting the fucking boot. Mark my words, mark it down. If they are not in the Western Conference Finals at the end of next season, or at the end of this season, I'm coming he's getting fired now if they make it to the western conference finals and they at least like win a game maybe they'll give him the benefit of the doubt and be like okay jj 2025 2026 season we better be hoisting up that trophy at the end of the year 2026 we better be the ones hoisting the Larry o'brien trophy because it's like a pattern with the lakers every two to three years if they are not winning the chi the championship th whoever the coaches is getting fired from luke walton to frank vogel to now darvin ham it's like and all the other guys in between everybody's getting fired because if they don't win that championship within two to three years you're gone and i'm sorry to say could it be just like genie buzz and rob Linka are just like the worst owner general manager combo in the world probably sadly enough there's no way to take the team from them uh genie buzz obviously like i said is the owner there's no way to take the team from her somebody needs to snap some sense into those two because like, they need to realize this team ain't winning the championship just because you plop lebron james on there doesn't mean you're gonna win but i'm gonna kind of wrap it up by saying this uh jj reddick good luck to you sir i hope you win games i hope you have a good job or do a good job with the lakers I'm hoping that you can bring the Lakers back to relevancy, get them back to positivity, make this team, just try and win games. Don't put them in the media for like losing big epic com or big epic like complete disasters, losing like 20 point comeback or wins or defeats. Try and make this team be something dangerous. Don't make this be team be the same team that we've been seeing for the past two to three years where every single game is like a one point game with like two minutes to go. Try and beat some people and just demolish them, please. It'll be kind of fun to see what JJ does with the Lakers. I'm, I'm excited. But other than that, I think I'm going to wrap up there. Hopefully, you guys did go out and enjoy today's video. If you did enjoy, as always, make sure you go and drop a like on today's video. Be very much appreciated if you do so. If you wanted to watch the entirety of today's video, thank you very much. And like I said, if you have a new opinion, do you agree or disagree with anything I said? What do you think about JJ Reddick being the new head coach of the Lakers? If you're a Lakers fan, what do you think about him being the new head coach? Do you like him being the head coach? Did you want one of the other guys, like I said, Kenny Atkinson, James Brego, or uh, Monty Williams? Maybe he could have possibly been interviewed. Do you like any of those other candidates? Or are you okay with JJ Reddick being the new head coach? Whatever your opinion may be, leave a complete opinion down in the comment section down below. Be more than welcome to talk about with you guys. If you're a fan of the content that I do poster and you want to go and hit that big rest subscribe button, feel free to do so. And do not forget to hit that little notification bell notified second to post but without further ado this has been Dylan Talk Sports have a great day peace